right, our big idea for data continues to be collecting, displaying, and analyzing data helps us to solve problems and understand the real world. Our concept today continues to be to demonstrate an understanding of constructing and analyzing data, but today we're working on choosing the best type of graph. So looking at the information that's given to you, and do you choose to use a scatter plot graph? Um, or a double bar graph, sorry, just a bar graph, which is similar to a squat scatter plot graph in that it comes to the one point, or do you need to use a line graph? Um, determining that based on the information that you're given. Now remember, you're going to have to connect this back often to if it's continuous or discrete data. Does the line need to be joined, or do the points, can the points be separate? And if the points can be separate, then a bar graph is a good substitute if you prefer to draw a bar graph. Both show the same data fairly clearly in much the same way. All right, let's take a look here. So we have Teo who counted the number of red chocolates in five different boxes of candy coated chocolates. I'm assuming like Smarties or something. This table shows the data collected. Teo, Teo sorry, displayed the data in a bar graph. She chose a vertical bar graph, so remember vertical is up and down. So the height of the bars could be used to compare the number of chocolates. And here we do have our information, five boxes with a total of up to 13, anywhere from 8 to 13 red chocolates per box. And here's what her graph looked like. So she's got a good title, oh sorry. She's got a good title. Uh, she's got a bar for each um, box and the number of red chocolates in each. Clearly demonstrates the data. Okay, Could be very similar to a, a scatter plot or a, a series of points graph where there would just be dots here instead of bars. Both very much showing the same information. And uh, we can see very clearly from this that box three had the most um, red chocolates, box one had the least chocolates. Um, on average, most of them it looked like had between 12 and 13 chocolates, uh, red chocolates in them. Let's take a look at some information, other information. Now we have Manuel who recorded the contents of his family's recycling bin. This table shows what his family recycled each week for two weeks. So we have plastic items. In week one it was 21, in week two it was 23. Glass items, 11 and 9. Cans, 7 and 9. And boxes, 10 and 12. He wanted to compare the data from week one and week two. When we're comparing data, we need to have two bars or two lines. So he's decided to draw a double bar graph to display the two sets of data. Let's move that up here so we can see it more clearly now. Um, and let's take a look. He's got a good title. He has a legend which is absolutely necessary when you're using a double bar graph. He's counted by twos, which is fairly logical. It goes from seven up to 23, so it's not super tall. Um, and he's counted by twos. He's got the item, what items they were, the number of them that were recycled. Very clear graph. Um, could not really do this one as a uh, line graph because our data is um, discrete, it is not continuous, and to try to do this with two sets of colors of dots would end up getting confusing. So a double bar graph was a good choice for him. Uh, from this, we can see that more plastic, oops, sorry, more plastic items, uh, cans and boxes were recycled in week two, so there's more happening there. Fewer glass items were uh, recycled in week number two, so this is the only one that had a decrease, and we can see that very clearly from our our comparisons as both of these are higher and higher and higher each time in week two. This is the only one that's lower in week two. We could see that generally they uh, recycled plastic items almost double as many really um, in some cases than others. 
Um, Manuel displayed the data to show the total amount recycled over two weeks. The data are discrete and there are sets of items. Uh, so Manuel drew a pictograph. So we have another option. We could do a pictograph. Let's take a look here. All right, so in his pictograph, he decided that since each number was divisible by four, could be divided by four, he chose for each basket to represent four of those items. And when you're drawing a pictograph, you want to consider that uh, fairly carefully. How many of those should be represented by each picture? And if you cut it in half, does it still work? And so on. So consider that carefully if you choose to draw a pictograph. And here we can see that plastic items were 44. If there's four items each, that means there should be a total of 11 of those. And it looks like there is. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and yes, there are glass items divided by 4. That should be 5 items. He's got 5 there. Cans divided by 4 should be 4, so he's got 4 there. And boxes, 24 divided by 4 should be 6. He's got that. Has to make sure he includes the legend, in this case for a pictograph as well, that one basket or one recycling bin, I'm assuming that picture is, is worth 4 recycled items. Um, and from his graph, his pictograph, he can see that in two weeks more plastic items were recycled than any other type, which could also be seen from the double bar graph. Um, in the two weeks, cans was recycled the least, and we can see that very clearly. So uh, two different ways to show some similar kind of data. Uh, careful when you're comparing two sets of data. In that case, a double bar graph is a pretty good idea. Um, and remember, of course, when the data is continuous, the line should be joined, the dots should be joined. And of course, we've talked about this a little bit. A series of points graph is very similar to a bar graph. So if you choose a series of points graph or a bar graph, generally either choice is acceptable and both display the data uh, quite clearly. All right, so to practice, uh, what type of graph would you use for each set of data and why. Discuss with your elbow partners each situation and try to determine which type of graph you think would be the best choice. Again, remember in your conversations, it doesn't mean that you have to necessarily agree, but use your conversations to solidify your own idea, to determine your own opinion based on, on the discussion um, and synergize that way to help get your idea solid in your head as to which graph you think is the best choice. Um, I will read each and then you can go off and discuss with your elbow partners. So first information or first type of, of data. Uh, scientists have been keeping track of the sea otter population, so the number of sea otters, because they are worried about the effect of environmental pollutants, so pollution, on sea otters. So with your elbow partner, what kind of a graph do you think you would use for that one? Secondly, how much water did the average person use each day? And again, with your elbow partner, what kind of a graph do you think would be the best choice for that one? And make sure you have your reasoning. Be able to tell why, preferably with more than one reason as opposed to just one. Press pause and discuss those now. All right, so scientists keeping track of sea otter population. Well, you can't have half an otter, so for sure it's going to be discrete data. Discrete data can be shown in um, a pictograph, a series of points, um, a bar graph, any one of those would work quite well in this situation. Um, of course, it would be somewhat dependent on the number that you have if you're going to choose to draw, for example, a pictograph. Maybe that's not your best choice. Um, and so on. But definitely I would say a bar graph or a series of points would be a good choice for that as your data is um, discrete. There's a certain amount um, that of, of sea otters. You don't have half a sea otter. Well, the second one is a little bit tricky. How much water did the average person use each day? Well, at first glance it is a measurement. Um, and you can use a 0.5 of a liter of water, for example. 
However, how much you use on Monday is a set amount and how much you use on Tuesday is a set amount and so on. So it would also be um, a bar graph or a series of points graph because it's a new amount each, each day. Okay. If we had um, something related to measurement where there's continuous growth or continuous um, shrinkage, uh, that would be more likely to be a line graph. All right, moving on to your concept practice. Page 269, 270, numbers 1, 3, 4, and 6. And you need to determine the best type of graph for the set of data. There is also some graph drawings, so make sure you remember to draw your graphs using the information we've discussed before about using your lines, not your spaces, uh, numbering by regular intervals, um, and so on. If you have questions along the way, please remember to ask.